have you ever thought about becoming an unstoppable in game? Not like fanless level unstoppable, but more like Eddie Gordo from the Tekken series. Yeah, you know the one, that one character that's hard to attack and defend against. Well, I want to say that today's build is going to be just that, except less hands to hands fighting and more being able to take on lethal hits easily without being down so often. The stack has been exceptionally powerful for the past season in both PvE and PvP, and I believe that its usage can now be expanded into endgame content such as Grand Masters. So I had the crazy idea to create a build where you always have protective measures in place to prevent you from dying so much, and this will become a staple for groups and solo players. From a simple well to the protective light mod activating, this wonderful build is going to be on par with Phoenix Protocol and Radiance well set up, but we are going to have more advantages than the latter, which lacks. Now think big and beefy like an Urza Titan whilst in a super, now put a dress on it. That's today's build basically. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we'll be using the Tomb of Grace as this is considered one of the best support based subclasses that offers the most to everyone in any scenario. Although the subclass is best combined with Phoenix Protocol, so you can design a build based around the super, the super can easily be passed over to other exotics as long as there is a distinctive show of synergy being offered. Benevolent Dawn, for example, will grant you ability energy when you empower or heal others within your rift, which will be making full use of when combined with the stag. The stack now offers a 25% damage reduction upon a rift being used while also granting us rift energy upon being hit and reaching critical health. Combine this with BD and you'll be guaranteed ability energy every time it's in use. This is important as we'll be using elemental wells to create wells for both us and our team and this will also link into how often we use our grenades to build up our super via the ashes to assets mod. With the rate of abilities being used and how often your rift will be down, you will see just how powerful and creative it can be without you needing to lift much of a finger. On top of that, Guiding Flames will empower you and your team upon melee hits, which is going to be a nice damage buff for a short while, and Divine Protection will provide air shields to you and your allies via charge grenades, which once again is going to make you even more tanky than normal. Simply put, you're going to have room to be flexible in how your stats are done since we can focus more on our rifts and less on the stats themselves. This will overall feed back into your build and practically make you unstoppable in the process. For weapons, you're going to want solar and explosions. Bonus points for both as we're going to be using the elemental world mod, but specifically the explosive world maker mod the most. For this, I'm going to be using one of the best kinetic grenade launchers in game that you should go farm if you haven't already. The Ignition Code with Blinded Grenades, Ambitious Assassin and Danger Zone is going to allow you to commit so much war crimes in one mode. This role specifically is going to allow us to both blind a large group of combatants in one shot, but also allow us to proc the Explosive Wellmaker mod for 2-3 to three worlds upon a multi-kill. Although this does leave you with a champion mod down, this can be easily covered by your team and honestly, going with what you currently have right now is going to make your lives a lot more easier. One blinding grenade can stop a room full of combatants just long enough so you can focus on the tougher combatants there and then and since we have the danger zone park we can extend this range further to cover more area. This weapon will be used a lot throughout the build and for something like this week's nightfall it's going to allow you to easily complete it with less hassle. For our secondary I'm using the tyranny of heaven bow with sneak bow and dragonfly and this is going to be a great pair for the build simply because of how powerful bows are in end game content. As I went with a bow, it only made sense to locate one with Dragonfly attached to it, so we can always make use of the Explosive Wellmaker mod. Although the explosion will be relatively small, and most combatants in Master or GMs are much more tougher to take down, we can still effectively stun them via a critical hit, and if done correctly, the solar explosion may take out a bunch of already weak ones in one shot, and make our lives a lot more easier. We could always swap for Tigu's Divination instead, as that will also hit harder and trigger the mod more often, but it will mean you won't be able to use your exotic heavy if you have something in mind, such as 1000 voices or sleeper simulants. For heavy, I've chosen to use 1000 voices, as this combined with parkour deconstruction is going to allow me to create a large amount of damage in one full shot. It's going to be the most helpful against the bosses and mini bosses who will be the most annoyingest to face, while at the same time we can also use the weapons to create wells as explosions will trigger the wellmaker mod, which is useful depending on the encounter it's used for. Alternatively, you can always just go ahead and use Reed Regret if you don't have the Eternal Exotic yet, 
Or alternatively, you can pick and use the sleeper simulant for a near same effect. As for our stats, everything being provided will be supported via the wells and benevolent dawn part being active. For this, this means that we do not need to focus so much on the stats like we usually do, so no 60 to 100 stats will be required from you guys this time round. This is great as it means you all have more freedom for what specific mods you want for the middle column of your armour for example. With this being the case, I would like to show you what you should be aiming for as a general rule of thumb. Discipline at 50 is more than enough of a passive regen you'll need from start to finish of your mission because of the synergy occurring behind the scenes. Mods such as Elemental Ordnance and Bountiful Realm will allow you to produce and garner worlds by the bucket loads which will be tied into the Elemental Charge mod and Protective Light mod which will then provide you the extra damage reduction upon reaching critical hits. Because of how easy it will be to produce wells, you'll be able to make full use of protective light no matter where you're located. We also have absolution available as well to further support of our abilities via the orbs of power we'll also be producing. From here your intellect should be kept at 50 as well since it also will play a big role, but not as much as you expect. As explosive wall maker and element ordnance are both in play with BD, producing abilities one after another will be simple and will easily allow us to use ashes to assets and hands on consistently to the point of having our supers back up within seconds. This is why you don't need to focus so much on this area compared to having the Phoenix Protocol, as you'll naturally get your super relatively up quickly. Your recovery now should be at 60, simply because you're going to be using it a lot, but that should be it. Remember, with the stag attached, we can garner rift energy easily back by hitting critical health and receiving a large amount of energy back, or we can simply just rely on Benevolent Dawn for this area, which will always be active. If you can see the pattern for the build, then you should be pretty much ready for the next stage. But before we do that, let's take a look at the mods compiled into one. For ahead, we have Minor Intellect, Hands On, Ashes to Axis, and Bountiful Well mod. Arm, we have Unstoppable Fusion Rifle, Overload Bow, and Elemental Orders mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Cocosa Dampner, Sniper Damage Resistance, and Explosive Well Maker mod. Leg, we have Minor Resilience, Absolution, Fusion Scavenger, and Plenty of Light mod. Bond with Minor Discipline, Parkour Deconstruction, and Elemental Charge mod. The update to the stack has made using it in PvE and PvP even more viable than before, and this is something that we should see more often when Bungie updates all exotics in game. Even though before, the exotic had its place as being a passive exotic that you could use for having some fun with, and it never had a place in end game because of its lacks in its features. Now we have a great way to maximise it on a constant basis and it never feels like it's doing just the bare minimum anymore. Take this build as an example, we have a high damage reduction baked into the build to allow users to survive the most powerful shots around. We have protective light that will be providing damage reduction the moment we hit critical health. We have the stag that will be providing damage reduction the moment we use our rifts. And then we have our super that's going to be providing an even bigger damage reduction when active. We do also have the elemental worlds that will play a big part in allowing us to get our abilities back up quickly, but also how it's going to be linked back into the most important aspects of the build, such as giving us the protective light mod via the elemental charge, or how we can get our super up really quickly if we rely on the ashes to assets mod. All of these flow seamlessly into each other and with how it's designed, it allows us just enough time to get behind cover or escape from a doomed situation with a silver of health and a massive benefit package from surviving. This is going to be ideal for situations where you have to capture a certain objective or you have to face waves upon waves of combatants with little to no room to move about. Take this week's Nightfall, an absolute pain to play on for Grandmasters because of the Defender Plate section and Boss Room section. Usually playing as a Radiant Swell Warlock will give you the best survival for all areas, but this build here can do just that but more for everyone. Imagine how easy you can make the run when you can use blinding grenades non-stop to stun a room and allow your teammates to focus fire on champions. Or how you can place a rift after a rift that will be healing and protecting your team but also granting you energy as well. That's what this build is capable of doing and it can make runs for you and your team 10 times more easier by simply allowing you to survive whatever is thrown at you. It's literally unstoppable in the right conditions and this week's nightfall is a grand example of it. Whatever you take from this, just know this, no matter what content you play in, this build will keep you alive as best as it can, except for overload captains as they will utterly destroy you no matter what build you have in mind. If you're lucky, you might even survive against them, 
or better off you may even win against them with the build. But that's if you're lucky though. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.